good is he he saves oh he rescues he redeems oh his grace has kept us free how good is he
so good to have you here at Cleveland Baptist Church. For those of you who don't know me, uh, my name's Josh, I'm the youth pastor here and I'm just so happy to see so many people here in this room. So welcome if you've come into CBC this morning, welcome if you're watching online and also the people that might be watching this a bit later on. It's so good to have you here and so that we can worship the Lord together. I think it'd be really great if just as the worship team start to play, we just spend a second just giving some of the things that might be on our mind distracting us to God so we can just recenter ourselves and have a think about that. So I'm just going to pray for us and just give those things up to God maybe. So yeah, dear Jesus, I thank you so much for this opportunity we have this morning to worship together and praise you. I pray that we can just give you those things that are on our mind, those worries, those stresses, Lord God, so that we can concentrate on you this morning and just give those things to you in your precious name. Amen. If you'd like to stand, we're going to worship together. Thank you. 
Oh 
Thanks so much that we can join with the angels in heaven praising your name, Lord Jesus, this morning. I thank you so much that you are a God that is worthy of our praise and is worthy of our time getting closer to you, Lord Jesus. I just pray that as we go on throughout this service, we can just stay in this place of worship, whether we're hearing about what's going on in the church or listening to Anthony preach, Lord God, I pray that we can stay in this space. I just pray that later on you give us ears to listen and hear your word, Lord God. In your precious name. Amen. Amen. Amazing. So, I have some notices for us all. And if you're like me and you find it easy to switch off, I've got a challenge for you as I read these notices. Okay. If you hear something, you're like, actually, maybe not, uh, that might not be for me, or I might not be able to make that. I want you to keep these things in your brain so that throughout the next few weeks, when these things are going on, you can be praying for them because, you know, it's one thing to go out and do it and be there, but also we need prayer in these things as well. So, I'm hoping that in a second, oh, I got across the button. Amazing. Okay, so our first notice is uh, we've got a Mosaic Church and Muddy Church uh, joint event happening next Sunday, uh, the 12th of March. It's at 3 p.m. Um, and it's at U Tree Farm, which is out at Kingston Seymour, um, or the place that you get the milkshakes from. If you're anything like me, that's how I, that's how I know it. Uh, it's going to be a great day of getting to know the, the farmers and the, the cows as well. I'm sure we'll be meeting some cows. And you'll see me just drinking way too much coloured milk. Um, thankfully, my mum won't get annoyed if I get too hyper, but I'm sure you can work out for your kids um, yourselves. So yeah, come along to that. It'll be loads and loads of fun to see you there. Uh, on the same Sunday next week, uh, on the 12th, we've got a Zoom communion. Uh, come along. I think the Zoom code should be in the end of week email. Um, if you haven't got it, it would be great to see you there. Um, but you've got to bring your own wine and, and bread, because uh, that won't be delivered to your door, unfortunately. We haven't got that sort of capability. Um, we're also hiring uh, for a children's worker. We're continuing the hunt. So if you think this might be for you or you know somebody that might be great for that role, then please do apply and please do let them know as well. All the information should be on the church website uh, for you as well. And that is definitely something we need to be, as a church, praying into that we find. 
the right person and the right fit for that job. Uh, and finally, um, giving is a really important part of our worship here at CBC. Um, so if you've ever wondered, I'd love to give, but I don't know how, then here's some of the ways um, that you can. So you can give in person. I think there should be a, a card machine somewhere, or you can follow that link at the bottom of the page um, to our website, and you can give there. Or, really fancy, you can get out your mobile phone and scan that QR code, um, and it should get you there as well. So that is everything for notices. So please come along to those things and be praying for those things as well. So I think the children and the young people are going to go out now. So children, you're heading downstairs to the hall, and young people, we're going upstairs to the tower. Amazing. Children, you go out. Let's welcome one another. Say hello to somebody nearby to us and greet them and bless them in the name of the Lord and then we will come back together. Okay, we're going to, um, I'm going to do a bit of a wardrobe change here. We're going to go into chaplaincy mode and uh, Helen and Karen are going to join me here so I'm going to find my chaplain sweatshirt. We kit our chaplains out with uh, t-shirts, sweatshirts, waterproofs, sleeping bags, all sorts of things. So we're going to chaplaincy mode because I, I thought it'd be really helpful for us to hear uh, about chaplaincy. We're heavily involved in chaplaincy here, and uh, we've got the the Easter eggs are here, and we're going to be delivering Easter eggs. And, and I'm going to research you in a minute about uh, somebody's feedback about Advent calendars and Easter eggs. We've done it for many years here now, and uh, I'll share that in a moment. But. Uh, um, we have two, two areas of chaplaincy that we are involved in at the moment. So at the moment, because we, we can develop this work, uh, we need more chaplains. Uh, but we have, at the moment, chaplaincy happening in the retail world of Clevedon, uh, the town centre, the, the markets, and in the Hill Road uh, area, uh, Alexander Road area. And Helen, you're uh, working in our retail chaplaincy, actually here in the town centre, aren't you? Yeah, so at the moment with the retail chaplaincy, there are two teams. So um, I'm involved with the team that does down the bottom. Uh, so we do sort of Triangle, Ken Road, um, and then along Old Church Road and Old Street. So all the main shops and businesses that are in the centre. And then there's another team that does Hill Road, Alexandra Road, that area up there. So there's quite a lot of shops out there and businesses, isn't there? You, you don't realise how many there are, but we're, 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 it's more than 10. <laughs> um, I think there's probably about 150 in the town centre, and then there's obviously whatever there is up the top, which um, obviously another pile up there. Yeah, so it's, it's not just a lot of Easter eggs t to purchase and do, but we to deliver them is quite a challenge for us, isn't it? And so a good challenge, but... Uh, uh, lots of, of business. So we're into doing this at the moment, aren't we? Start, well, we're going to start soon. Maybe some have started all, already. And uh, uh, that may be where some people uh, could help us because um, you may say, I'm not sure if I'm going to be any good at doing this chaplaincy uh, work and visiting businesses. But our experience has been that if you go into a shop and say, we'd like to give you an Easter egg, um, they really like you. <laughs> so... Uh, uh, I can't guarantee 100% that would be the case, but most people in our world um, will say, that's, that's really kind. And so, uh, although we've got a team going out, we could add in, couldn't we, some Easter egg delivery teams? 
Absolutely. Um, it's a really good time, actually, if you want to just find out more about what we do as chaplains. Uh, even if you're not thinking about joining the team, but you'd just like to see what we do, then do, by all means, um, uh, get hold of us. And um, you can come out with us and deliver some Easter eggs. And it's um, dead easy. You don't have to worry about having deep, meaningful conversations necessarily. Um, people just love the chocolate. It breaks all the language barriers. <laughs> um, we do um, these... Uh, real Easter eggs have a booklet in which has the Easter story and we do um, are gradually producing those in different languages so we have some in Vietnamese and things like that so we do try and get the Easter story across to um, all the people that we're meeting but um, yeah do come out with us and um, it doesn't have to be for long half an hour an hour whatever you can spare but it's really good fun and it's really satisfying um, people just really appreciate knowing that they're being thought of. It's as simple as that. Um, everybody in the world wants to know that someone cares about them. And by us going in, whether it's with the Easter eggs or just going in visiting, we're showing that we're thinking about them. And people are amazed, actually, that someone's bothered for no reward, no, you know, we're not paid to do it or anything, that we're bothered. Um, and people really appreciate that. Great. And... Uh, Helen coordinates the um, town centre area here, so you could find out more. We certainly need some uh, people up in the Hill Road area. We need to build a team up stronger there. And it's not just a, uh, a Cleveland Baptist Church thing, the retail chaplaincy. It's a, it's a, a churches or the Church in Cleveland project, and it's good that we have other people from other churches uh, as part of the team. And uh, uh, again, we need some certainly some delivery of Easter eggs up into the Hill Road, Alexander Road area. But it could be a taster. And, and we do, it's a great introduction course that we give people uh, to help them think about chaplaincy. And, and it's really working well. I'd just like to read this to you. Um, came from one of the people that own a business in the square here, around here. Uh, I, I, I personally wasn't around when you, it wasn't me personally, but one of our team, uh, dropped in either the Advent calendar or the Easter egg. However, I wanted uh, to thank you and share a story as to what happened at Christmas um, I thought I'd take the calendar home. I, I sat down in the evening a few days into December with my wife and two of the older children and decided to catch up on the doors we had an open. When I opened the calendar, I found a little book of activities and the story of the birth of Jesus. We started off, what started off as sharing a few chocolates quickly became something we gathered around each evening to hear the next day's story. It was a lovely time of the day. My wife and daughters also learnt far more than I expected them to about this part of the Bible. Now you've dropped in an Easter egg. And I was over the moon to see it was by the same company, and it too came with an activity and storybook. When I brought this home and told the family, I think they were more excited about the story time together than the chocolate. So in summary, I just wanted to say a massive thank you and to share with you just how much your act of kindness has brought uh, how much joy your act of kindness brought to my family. Hey, four pound Easter egg, four pound advent calendar. Wow, in a, in a family. Uh, and so um, I know some will lose it and some will say, oh, thanks very much, and park it somewhere. But it's working, it's touching lives. And what's a, an amazing thing when I meet with the chaplain teams and we do some training together very you know, often we pray together is, is now the connections they have and I, I was out with one of the teams and one of the chaplains and said well this person's in this shop and they could tell me a little bit about them and, and what they've been praying for them about a little bit of the story and so it's just been wonderful to see that, that relationship <laughs> developing so retail chaplaincy we need some more people out there come on that could be God speaking to you if you're saying no that's not me I would suggest it will, could well be you. If you're sitting there saying, that could be me, I'm saying definitely. <laughs> so uh, now we, uh, we're going to move to Karen here uh, because uh, we also have chaplaincy, which is run by us out of this church uh, as a Clevedon Baptist Church project alongside Poets Muse Community Church. Chaplaincy there, don't we? So you look after chaplaincy. There's, there's a, a few of you. Tell us about the chaplaincy team at Poets Muse. Yeah, there's uh, four of us. Um, Andy, 
Cheryl, Susan and myself, yeah. uh, in one way we have it easy because we go in a nice warm <laughs> care home, we're not walking around in the cold, mind you it can be too hot. Um, that's why you only have t-shirts and not sweatshirts and all that kind of stuff right. in coats. Maybe. That's absolutely right. So what we have done, um, so that we can try and build up good relationships with the residents, each of us has, a th we have a list of residents so at the moment, um, Cheryl, Susan and I have between nine and ten residents and we always um, try and visit them or have a chat with them so we can build relationships. And Andy looks after, I think there's about 14 men. Um, and that works really well. Uh, in the last week, I think we've visited between us 20 residents. So that's not quite half yeah, right. of the residents there. Um, all the staff are very welcoming and chat to us. Uh, if there's anyone who is in need of any particular visit, regardless of who's on your list, you will go and yeah. see them. So that's good. Some of them um, are very positive, and if you ask if they'd like prayer, they will. Others say, well, I don't believe all that rubbish. Um, but that's all right, because I, what I have found is um, when you're in a care home, the people who tend to visit you are your family, and that's wonderful, but they don't see anyone else, a lot of them. So it's nice, they enjoy seeing a new face, um, chatting about things, and sometimes, um, sometimes I'm in there 10 minutes, 15, sometimes it might be an hour because someone wants to talk something, um, but they don't want to tell a family. Yeah. Um, so I, I just sit and listen, and we pray, and I'm sure the others are doing yeah. a similar so, so thing. So again, it's a, it's a simple ministry of, of, of listening and being yeah. friends with people. Yeah. Uh, not just to the residents, we, we try and support the staff yes, in there. Yes, we do. And uh, yeah, I, I've had as a chaplain that response about prayer. Some people really like prayer. Mm. I have footballers who used to say, uh, one of the people in United, I don't believe in that, until we got into the FA Cup fourth round, and all of a sudden <laughs> they wanted all sorts of prayer. But, um, uh, but no, seriously, we, we want to, we, we pray for them whether they not, we, as we go away, can't we? We can still pray for them. So again, uh, Andy's doing a great job there. We, we really could do uh, with uh, certainly another man to come into yeah. the team because we'd like to, to um, um, that's quite a big lump of men there, big group there yes. to, to work with. So, so we could share that would be good. But there's some room to add into this team, uh, because also there's staff that we want to pick up and, and care for. So again, you can speak to Karen about uh, Poets Muse. You can have a go. You can start to, to do that. And that runs, this chaplaincy runs alongside Poets Muse Church that will be running again this afternoon. And yeah. we're going to do a midweek Bible study into Poets Muse, aren't we? And other things. So it's really starting to yeah. develop there. So Yeah, um, we're doing um, the Bible Society um, I think it's called Bible Experience. Yeah. It lasts for seven weeks. There's a little video lasts no more than about five minutes, a little booklet, and it's just really bouncing ideas around. So um, uh, Howard, who runs the Wellbeing, is happy for us to run that, and it starts on the 12th of April. So that's quite exciting. Very um, exciting. We're not taking round yeah. Easter eggs as chaplains. No. We're taking Mother and Father Day presents. You do like something different in poetry. Yes, yeah. but we are having Easter eggs from the community church. But not those ones. No, that's, that's okay. That, that's, that's, but they've got yeah. a little booklet with them too. Have they? There yes. you go. So it's all sorted out. That sort of runs slightly different to this. Yeah. This is uh, these Easter eggs are sponsored by uh, churches together in, in Clevedon, and uh, we uh, do the poets muse chaplaincy work from from yeah. the church. I, th I think yeah. you will find it very worthwhile doing. It's a privilege to be there with people um, who, some of them are well into their nineties and even the hundreds. <laughs> Um, and also relations. Yeah. Um, I was waiting to speak to someone, I'll be very brief, and a man came up to me, said, you're a chaplain, are you around? I'm just going to tell my mum her sister's died. Could you be there for her when I leave? What a wonderful thing yeah. to be asked to do. And um, yeah, I had a little letter from the resident later to say how helpful that was. So it, it's a really valuable. It's a blessing to them. But it, I found yeah. it a blessing to me. It's a privilege to be with older people. So. Go for it. If you want to come along and walk around with one of us, yep. we can do that. We'll do some training. We, we'll help you with that. And um, it's been great to see a whole team of chaplains are working. I, I, I have people coming to me saying, can you provide chaplaincy here? And the answer is yes, once we, we train and recruit some more chaplains. So it's a, a ministry in this town that we could develop and grow. So 
uh, think and pray about that and uh, see if that's something you could do. A c- couple of hours a week. That's what you say. How, how many hours? Well, two hours maximum. Uh, could be at a weekend. Um, we could drop you into the, 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 the market team. I, I know Susan Dare looks after the, the Sunday market. Uh, I should be in church. Well, actually, we could take church out into that market on, on that Sunday and uh, up in Hill Road once a month. There's all kinds of possibilities where we could uh, link you in. So uh, have a think and pray about that. In fact, let's do that right now. Let's just be still in God's presence. And uh, Lord, we want to pray for your favour to rest your Spirit's anointing to rest upon this ministry of chaplaincy. Thank you for this vibrant mission work going on as we take church out into the world of work, of retail, into a workplace, into a retirement care home. We pray for our chaplains. Thank you, Lord, for... The fact that our retail chaplain is, chaplaincy work is a, a church in Clevedon project now. Lord, we, we want to share in partnership with other congregations this work. Lord, we pray these Easter eggs. Simple gift will touch lives. And Lord, where we need uh, to be thinking about this, would you guide us? Uh, Lord, we do pray. We come to you. Send more workers, Lord, into the harvest fields. Come praying to you, the Lord of the harvest. And maybe even in these moments now here, that you would speak and call. And as we continue in worship, let's pray together this prayer that uh, some of us could call it the Lord's Prayer. But let's say together, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. In all my days, I've been held in your hand. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, for I will sing of the goodness of God. And all my life, you have been. All my life you have been so, so good. This is 
Lord, thank you that we can stand in the reality of, of living hope in you, Lord Jesus. Lord, give us reassurance and fresh confidence in your victory over death and the grave. And Lord, we thank you for living hope and we thank you for your living word. Lord, speak to us. Be at work in our lives this day and into the rest of this week. In Jesus' name. Amen. Please sit down. I... Uh,
I brought a, a book with me uh, this morning, uh, and uh, it's uh, called The World's Greatest 20th Century Battlefields. And uh, there was a BBC uh, TV programme uh, that Peter uh, and Dan Snow did about uh, the, these battlefields, and the book uh, came alongside the uh, uh, TV series, so uh, somehow I ended up with this, this book, and you turn into the contents, and it has a list of the, the battlefields that uh, they investigated and told the history and the story of. And um, for us, a well-known one would be uh, perhaps the, the Falklands War and uh, the Kuwait War. Uh, but as you look at the context, the interesting thing is that uh, there ain't no Baptist churches listed here. But actually, and sadly, they could be. Because church can so easily become a battlefield. A battlefield for wars and fights and conflict and quarrels amongst the people of God. The great battle of. And some of you are registering them. I read this book and let me state it, you know it, that war is an awful, evil thing. It destroys and takes life away. And although we have our focus on the Ukraine war, there are wars taking place across the, 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 the planet this, this very day, and that is an awful thing. All right? need to say to us that, that, that wars in the life of the church is an awful thing. It is destructive and it takes life away. Uh, James, James chapter 4, now dares to preach, <laughs> to bring uh, prophetic teaching to the church about church wars Battles, fights, he speaks about conflict in the church. And as he does, he gives us insight into what's going on. And also, he gives us a kind of a, a to-do list to work our way out of this. Chapter 4, James chapter 4, what is causing the quarrels and fights among you? That's a great question for us. Quarrels and fights within the congregation or uh, perhaps within a ministry or church activity team or fights and quarrels uh, among members. Don't, he says, they come from the evil desires at war within you. you. You want what you don't have, so you scheme and kill. You murder, says James, to get it. You are jealous of what others have, and, and, but you, you, you can't get it, so you fight and wage war to take it away from them. Do you think they just happen, these quarrels and fights and wars in church life? Think again, says James. James speaks about a, a, a driving force from within, a desire from within that wants uh, I, I, uh, this desire from within that wants position or prominence is a desire even for our own pleasure. Actually, we get our word hedonism from the word that, that James uses here, that self and our own pleasure has become the centre of our longings. And a selfish quest and, and, and pleasure becomes kind of the philosophy for life for us. And when we don't get it, we explode. And get our own way, we're going to explode, cause trouble. So the battles and wars in church starts from within us. And then becomes a battle and a war and quarrels among you, says James, among us. These quarrels, fights could be a kind of whole variety, wide variety, uh, verbal disputes or arguments over theology or competing with others for power and recognition, jostling for authority, accusing others, anger, pride, disagreements. All of this now becomes a battleground in the church. 
And so there's bitterness towards others and lingering unforgiveness and disunity and, and broken relationships. Uh, it's possible that physical fights on occasion broke out as tempers flared and things spun out of control. But it's only happened to me once. But someone, uh, went for me one day at the back of the church, not this church, trying to push me through a wall. I think they're a little bit upset that morning. But uh, uh, it's okay. I trained at Spurgeon's College. We, I did the lecture, how to uh, avoid getting pushed through the brick wall on a Sunday morning lecture. By an angry church member. That's what happened. I was agile and sharp and scared. Uh, and, uh, and as I looked around for the rest of the leaders to, to come to my rescue, they were scarpering off into other useful activity away from the place. Uh, I, I, it may be the same for you. Over the years, over the years, uh, I've had some brutal, nasty, attacking verbal words. Remember... James 3 in the tongue. I kind of had that. Not just spoken, emails. Used to be letters, now it's emails. Even faster and quicker. Emails with exclamation marks all over them. All kinds of stuff that comes through. Capital letters. Suddenly left their marks on me over the years. There's a few scars there. I've not been murdered yet. But James says, you scheme and kill, you murder. Uh, some commentators, I mean, what, what's, what's the, what's the, what's he, why has he got that in here? Uh, some commentators do point out that so within this church that James writes to, uh, 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 with an early church, Christian, uh, Jewish Christian believers, that uh, uh, there may have well have been a, a, a whole company of people in those church congregations uh, who were known as zealots in their previous life anyway. Uh, and we know one of the disciples of Jesus was, was a zealot, and uh, uh, they weren't afraid to use force uh, and use their hands in, in, in the olden days anyway. Uh, and some commentators uh, kind of think that uh, uh, that background kicks back in, and uh, actually it's quite hands-on uh, in some church settings. Well, whether it's physical, literal, or is it a metaphor to grab our attention, you would probably expect if James had literal, physical murder in mind, he, he, he would have said more, far more than he does. But he probably means something along the lines that you are murderously angry. Something that Jesus picks up in the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5. Apostle John says, uh, everyone who hates his brother or sister is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in then, 1 John 3. We uh, ran, as a student minister, a holiday club. It's a fantastic holiday club. The whole church got kind of mobilised in it. I was a student there, and we did a, a four or five day holiday club in the school, and then we did a family evening, and, and loads of people turned up. And uh, um, it was a great, great event. The church has never done anything quite like this, and it's terrific. And we, we gathered afterwards, and and we had some feedback, and we shared some stories, and we prayed together. And then someone stands up. I, I was a student there. I should have, in a kind way, sort of taken them out. But it was too late. And they started to speak. And they started to complain that the kitchen had been left in a messy order. It wasn't back how it used to be. As if anybody really cared. But this person did. And now we, we, we had a, a war on our hands out of nowhere. And as she spoke, the, the life drained out of the team. She, she strangled the life out of the team. And the, and the person who had run the thing for us, poured her life into it in the last few weeks, just sat there, distraught, destroyed. It wasn't the time. It wasn't the place. A horrible kitchen anyway. <laughs> when there are fights and quarrels among you, something dies in the life of a church. 
Something dies in the life of a congregation. Something dies in the life of a team. Something dies in us. Of course God is the God of resurrection life. But the language, the imagery James brings here, it should alert us to something extremely, extremely serious. Fight some wars among you. You, look what he says. You scheme and kill. Wow. Second uh, thing on this, something very different now. He says there's another cause for these fights and wars. It's about prayer. Firstly, it's absence. You uh, don't have what you want because you don't ask God for it. But we we sideline God. We, we're going to go it alone. Uh, and we don't ask God. Actually, we don't want to ask God because we're not wanting God to intervene, for God may have a different view and a different way than ours anyway, so we're going to leave God out and we're going to press on ourselves and we don't ask. But to ask is to pray. And we need to be in the habit of asking God. It needs to be our regular habit. We, we need you, God. We're asking you, God, to, to be at work here. We need wisdom. We're going to ask you. We need the Holy Spirit. We're going to ask you. We need to overcome any reluctance to seek and ask God. And then secondly, it's, it's abuse of prayer. And even when you ask, you don't get it because your motives are all wrong. You want only what will give you pleasure. And then James says, look, there's another reason why there are wars and battles and fights and quarrels among you. It's to do with friendship with the world and Spiritual adultery. You adulterers. Wow. Don't you realise that friendship with the world makes you an enemy of God? I, I say it again. If you want to be a friend of the world, you make yourself. Look what a man says. You make yourself an enemy of God. You adulterers. Sadly, over the years, Joe, myself, we've we sat, prayed, journeyed with people whose marriage partner has cleared off with someone else. And the heartbreaking misery and devastation and the anger and the pain and the jealousy that unfaithfulness and adultery brings to a marriage relationship between a husband and wife. It's a... It's a Tragic, terrifying thing. So don't do it. Just in case you're wondering. And it's this kind of picture that, that, that James brings. The world that can be very seductive, you know, like unfaithful work, work, wives, flirting with the glamour of this world and never realising that to be the world's lover means becoming the enemy of God. The world that we don't handle it rightly in our lives, it will put us in conflict with, with God. I say it again, Sir James. I'm saying it to you again. Please, people of God, hear this. If you want to be a friend of the world, if you want to cozy up to the world, if you want to share the same views as the world, the same outlooks as the world, if you're going to commit yourself to the world, you become an enemy of God. It's red alert moment. All the sirens should be going off around us in this verse. And then comes verse 5. And um, verse 5 is quite a difficult verse because there's, there's a translation challenge. And that's why if you've got in your translation, you have in the footnotes different ways of, of saying what goes on here. It falls into two main ideas of thinking. It could read, the spirit he caused to dwell in us envies intensely. Therefore, this would be a verse about us and our own envy. Uh, fallen human nature tends to be envious. It's a negative human jealousy, an env envy which, is, which we know, we know is true. We, we envy the green-eyed monster, Shakespeare stuff. You know, we talk about being green with envy. Sick with envy. Tinge of green when we feel a bit 
sick, sick with envy. When John Goodridge, when I was at school, arrived on a Monday morning with his new Casio digital watch and didn't give over about his new Casio digital watch and all the buttons on this Casio digital watch. So it happened, I remember it, on that day inside me. As he was showing me the buttons, it was pressing my button. We have envy buttons. Pathetic, really, a Casio watch. Although I do say, when I walk down Cribs Causeway, I've got all these shops now with the most fancy watches in. About four or five thousand pounds each. And, and I, I, well, there's nobody in there. <laughs> but if you'd like to go in there and buy me one, that, <laughs> that'd be great. We need more grace to help us if that's us. That's all of us. He gives us grace generously. As the scriptures say, God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. Or this difficult verse, um, uh, and in our church translation, it says, do you think the scriptures have no meaning? They say that God is passionate, that the spirit he placed within us should be faithful to him. Uh, it may have in your version... He yearns jealously over the spirit that he has made dwell in us. That God jealously longs for our faithfulness and love. But both these meanings are, are great for us to work on and apply, by the way. Theologians speak about the romance of redemption. The idea uh, uh, from Scripture that redemption is not just seen as a kind of a metaphor, as a, a business marketplace transaction, but it's a matter of the heart. That to receive the message of salvation is to be married to Christ. You can use that imagery. To be faithful in covenant love with God. So why does God care so much whether you and I are friends with the world? Uh, in James language, you adulterers. A bit strong, isn't it, James? Well, no, not once you realise that God is a jealous God. That's what this verse is about. It's a statement about the positive, holy, divine God jealousy. God's great fire of love for us. He's, he's a fiercely jealous lover. He yearns jealously over the spirit that he is made to dwell in us, or that the spirit, the Holy Spirit he calls to dwell in us, longs jealously that God is passionate, that the spirit he's placed within us should be faithful to him. It's a verse about God's holy, jealous love for his covenant people and his desire and demand that we should not love another. We end up being friends with the world and being spiritual adulterers. God burns with a, a protective, avenging, guarding, exclusive, precious jealousy for the undivided allegiance and affection of us, his people, as would be the same in a marriage relationship between a husband and wife. Something the scriptures speak of time and time again. Do not worship, do not worship any other God for the Lord whose name is Jealous. Exodus 34. Is a jealous God, a God who is jealous about his relationship with, with you, you. God wants our hearts, not just our hands. He wants our devotion, not just our duty. God wants a relationship with us, not just us on church rotors. God, jealousy, longs for our faithfulness and love. Look at verse 6. He gives grace generously, as the scripture says. God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. See, God's grace more than supplies what is needed for people to remain faithful to him, and not to become friends of the world. And this battle that goes on around us, we, 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 we humble ourselves, we reach more grace. Because God opposes the proud. Proverbs 3, 
Simply put, pride is when all of life is about self. And that should deeply concern us. But humility, being humble, is the way forward. Now James brings to us tough teaching. It's tough for us to hear this stuff. It's strong and robust and it's intrusive into our lives, as it should be. But we also need to hear that he gives grace generously. We need grace, much grace. Grace that is saving, living, energetic, always active, life-changing, sin-killing grace. Grace that's pulsating uh, with the very favour of God himself at work in our lives and at work in the lives of our congregations and our church teams and our activity teams. The grace of God. But as we humble ourselves, rather than exalting ourselves and what in our way are we going to not give in? The sinful pride, God promises to give even more grace if we humble ourselves. He gives grace generously. He gives grace generously. Grace that is greater than all our sin, greater than all our shame, greater than all our failures, greater than all our battles and fights, greater than any power on earth, greater than any war within or battle from the outside, greater than Satan and his demonic host, greater than your wants, greater than seduction and appeal that comes from the world, and greater than you. It's all sufficient grace. We need grace, much grace. As James comes to the end of this, he just gives us a to-do list. Because having brought the issue out and highlighted the causes, he now gives us a notice. It's a spiritual approach. Here's a way forward for us. Humble yourselves before God. Submit, sign up, enlist, get into proper rank. As James uses a kind of military term here, put yourselves under God's reign. Resist the devil, he will flee from you. We say no to the devil in the name of Jesus. You resist by submitting to God. We stand against Satan by aligning our hearts and minds with the truth of what God has revealed in his word. We, we resist him when, when we love God above all else. Come close to God, verse 8, and God will come close to you. It's a call to whole life worship. Wash your hands, you sinners. Clean up your act, in other words. Uh, we were in TGI Fridays having some food, and uh, as the plates were taken away after the, the, the first course, um, I was handed uh, this, and it says on it, clean up and move on to dessert. <laughs> I like that. Um, I didn't have dirty hands, I kept it sealed. Um, <laughs> clean up and move on. Do it today. Come on, come on, clean up your act, purify your heart, for your loyalty is divided between God and the world. Let there be tears for what you've done. Let there be sorrow and deep grief. Grieve, mourn, wail. It's the biblical language for, for repentance and getting our lives back right with God. Daily repentance of faith. It's not living in some sort of constant doubt about the power of Christ's forgiveness and that once for all time cleansing or purification that comes when we first put our faith in Jesus. But rather it's that constant realisation of our tendency to wander away. And our need to stay on course with God. Get real, wash, purify. Then... Make a change. Let there be sadness instead of laughter and gloom instead of, of joy. Now, of course, we do the opposite sometimes, but here, when, when people are saying, oh, it's, it's time for laughter and joy, James says, no, these moments of quarrels and fights among you, they, these require tears and sorrow and deep grief and sadness and gloom. I was thinking about the, 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 the direction our church denomination is taking at present, how Deep grief, sadness and gloom may be the prophetic approach and order of these present days. Not time for laughter and joy anymore. We need to change our 
sad, uh, uh, let there be sadness instead of laughter, gloom instead of joy. Humble yourselves before the Lord. He'll lift you up. How come? Because Jesus, in that great revelation of grace in history, humbled himself. And I found this picture, which may, if you don't like hot air balloons, it's killed the picture. Because you're like, I don't like air balloons, they're scary things. But I just love that picture of being lifted up, taken up. Humble yourselves before the Lord. He will lift you up. And we will know God's grace. Because it's by grace that somehow... I, you, we stand. It's the art of celebration. Oh, yeah.
Lord Jesus, as angels looked on, you humbled yourself, gave up your glorious throne, obedient to God. You came to the earth full of compassion for us. What can I do before such love? To your majesty, I bow. Your great sacrifice. You gave up your life. Such was your passion for us. God raised you up and now heaven sings in praise of your glorious cross. What can I do before such power? To your majesty I bow. We bow down. We bow down. We bow down before you, Lord. And he gives grace generously. As the scripture says, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. We bow down. We bow down. So you go into the rest of this week, you may need to find that, that, that private space where you would say, you may even physically do it, bow down, we bow, I bow down, Lord. We thank you for grace to the humble, that you give more grace, you give grace generously, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forevermore. Amen.